What if you could see more dimensions? How would you see the world around you? How would the things you already know change? In 1884, the school principal Edwin Abbott Abbott published the book Flatland, a novel in many dimensions. And the book tells the story of two-dimensional geometric figures, like squares and circles. They live in a world without a third dimension. The dynamics of the story change when the two-dimensional inhabitants are visited by a sphere, a being that has access to the third dimension, which is completely inconceivable to the mere squares and circles. And in today's video, we are going to visit Flatland. We will use the strange experiences of these two-dimensional figures with three-dimensional beings to take it one step further. What would it be like to see in four dimensions? What would happen if we were visited by beings that exist in one more spatial dimension than us? What would they see? What could they do with us? Hey, Pedro here. This video you are watching was originally in Portuguese, my native language. This is the attempt of our team to translate it to English. And I sincerely hope you enjoy it. Your feedback is extremely important to us. Now, back to the video. But before we visit the two-dimensional world, we need to do a quick review of what spatial dimensions are. Each spatial dimension represents a possible way to change position in space. For example, let's imagine a cart stuck on a straight train track. This cart is confined to one dimension. It can move forward or move backward. But all the movements of the cart are fixed on a single line, which is the train track line. It is impossible for this cart to move otherwise. This cart is restricted to moving in a single direction. Or, putting it another way, in a single dimension. So much so that we can even abstract the movement of the cart, and instead of thinking of it as an object with volume, wheels and complications, we can think of the cart as a point on a straight line. The movement of the point fixed to the line is exactly the same as that of the cart. They are identical. The way a point fixed on a line moves is exactly identical to how a cart fixed on a train track moves. This straight line indeed represents Lineland, which would be a one-dimensional world. But now we can add a second dimension. Imagine a sheet of paper on a table. If you only slide this sheet across the table without ever lifting it, it will only move in two dimensions. It can only go forward or backward or to one side or the other. In other words, two directions of movement. Two dimensions, and just like for Lineland, we can represent this movement in an ideal way. A square existing in an infinite two-dimensional plane. Flatland. Unlike Lineland, Flatland has an enormous diversity of inhabitants. Squares, circles, triangles, hexagons, unnamed shapes, all of these are two-dimensional figures existing in this infinite plane. You and I do not exist in Flatland. I can move up and down, which is the third dimension. So here's the question. What would happen if we tried to visit Flatland? How would a flat two-dimensional world perceive our world in all its volume? But here we need to be careful. Knives and scissors are sharp because they have thin edges and the two-dimensional shapes in Flatland are perfectly thin. So they are extremely sharp. If they cross your body, they will cut you. So instead of going ourselves, we are going to send probes in the form of spheres and cubes. It is impossible to place an entire three-dimensional sphere onto a plane that has two dimensions. All we can do is place one piece at a time, a slice, a section of the sphere at a time. And when the sphere touches the plane of Flatland, what the two-dimensional inhabitants of this world see is a small circle. This circle is equivalent to a horizontal cross-section of the tip of the sphere. As we immerse the sphere through the two-dimensional world, the circle seen in Flatland gradually increases. It reaches its maximum when the middle of the sphere touches the plane. It starts to shrink until it vanishes when the sphere finishes its journey. From the perspective of Flatland, they saw something very absurd. A circle appeared out of nowhere, changed size, and disappeared. And this can scare the inhabitants of Flatland. They will arm themselves and prepare for disasters. They will hardly understand that the mysterious circle they saw was part of something larger, a three-dimensional sphere. It has access to an entire extra direction. All they know are two dimensions, and that is what they accept as the whole. Making a second visit using a cube can help the inhabitants of Flatland understand their situation a bit more. If we pass the cube through the plane by aligning the face of the cube, it will simply just appear as a fixed size square as it passes through Flatland. The inhabitants would see a square appear, last for a while as it passes through Flatland, and then disappear out of nowhere. What we can do that's interesting here is change the direction in which the cube intersects. If the cube touches the plane with one of its corners, it will appear as a hexagon, which is a six-sided figure. 
Now, if we start to rotate and change the orientation of the cube, the inhabitants of Flatland will see a constantly changing geometric figure. That would be bizarre for them. A single three-dimensional cube contains an infinite number of possible two-dimensional geometric shapes. A new direction means infinite new possibilities. And if we really wanted to terrify two-dimensional beings, it would be very easy. We can see their entire parts. We can touch the circle directly in its center, which is an inaccessible place for the other inhabitants of Flatland. All two-dimensional boundaries can be bypassed by the third dimension. We can even take one of the shapes from Flatland, lift it off the plane, turn it upside down, and place it back on the plane. The shape would literally make an extra planar journey. And when it was turned for it, it would feel as if it had entered a mirror. What was left is now right. And maybe all of this would be enough to give the inhabitants of Flatland an idea of what is really happening. Who knows? In Flatland, the square might have watched a video on PlaneTube about what it would be like to visit Lineland. Then it would have an epiphany. We are being visited by three-dimensional beings. And just as the inhabitants of Flatland cannot conceive of the third dimension, which corresponds to movement up and down, we, you and I, cannot conceive of a possible fourth dimension. But we are going to try. That is the purpose of this video, just so we understand that it is possible. And for that, start with a ruler on the table. Now place a second ruler so that it makes a 90 degree angle with the first ruler. Simple. Just place the ruler in the other direction. And now, carefully place a third ruler at a 90 degree angle to the two rulers on the table. It's simple. Just place a ruler upright from the table. This third ruler that we placed at the same time makes a 90 degree angle with the table and with the two rulers on the table. The next step is also easy. Just place a fourth ruler that also makes 90 degree angles with all three of these at the same time. And that is impossible. Not only is it impossible, but it's also difficult to imagine how that would happen. What you and I are failing to imagine is precisely the fourth dimension, which is an inconceivable direction for the human mind. And trust me, we tried. The inventor of the Jungle Gym toy originally created it to train his children in three-dimensional movement. He wanted to teach his children to have such a good understanding of three dimensions that they might be able to imagine a fourth, which didn't work out very well after all. Imagining a fourth dimension is basically impossible for us. But not everything involving the fourth dimension is impossible. What we can imagine is what it would be like to see these four-dimensional objects passing through our three-dimensional world, just as the sphere and the square pass through Flatland. And we will start with a hypersphere. A hypersphere is simply a sphere in four dimensions. It indeed approaches our world through this extra direction. And when it touches our reality, we see a small sphere appear out of nowhere. The sphere would increase to its maximum size, decrease, and then vanish. Does this remind you of something from Flatland? That would be very strange. But the strangeness doesn't stop there. Perhaps to alert us to their true nature, the inhabitants of the four-dimensional world might send a hypercube, which is their version of a cube. From one angle, the hypercube would just look like a floating cube to us. But if the hypercube started to rotate in the fourth dimension, we would see its shape change as it rotates. A single four-dimensional shape contains infinite three-dimensional shapes. One more dimension, infinite new possibilities. And if four-dimensional beings wanted to terrorize us, it wouldn't be difficult either. Remember how we were able to see the inside of two-dimensional circles from our own 3D perspective? Beings in four dimensions would be able to see the inside of your body. They could directly touch any internal organ without going through your skin. This is the three-dimensional version of touching the center of the circle. And if they wanted, they could take you, lift you through the fourth dimension, and put you back reversed in relation to the fourth dimension. To you, the world would look like this. Very strange. This would make your body mirrored. If you were right-handed, you would now become left-handed. And the journey through the fourth dimension would be anything but pleasant. You would see the world around you changing shapes in an incomprehensible way. Until you are put back just to feel twisted in strange ways. Traveling in more dimensions would be terrifying. But still, we have an advantage over four-dimensional beings. It's impossible to tie knots in ropes in four dimensions, so their shoes would always be untied. So if you were about to be attacked by a four-dimensional being, maybe running would be an option. Who knows? It might trip. Good luck with that. Jokes aside, trying to imagine a fourth dimension beyond our physical and mental reach is an exercise that challenges both our imagination and our perception of the world. For the inhabitants of Flatland, there is a part of the universe inaccessible to them, which is the third dimension. I would like to invite you to reflect on this with me. Isn't the same true for us today? it is common to accept the world we live in as it is. We have one dimension of width, one of height, and one of depth in total. But is that all there is? 
Are these all the dimensions? Or are we just a small part in a limited region and something much larger and much stranger is out there? We don't know. And it's consistently good to remember, not everything needs to be what it seems. Thank you very much and see you next time.